a lovely night in Columbus, Ohio, and you're watching the Big Ten Men's Lacrosse Tournament. This evening, the Nittany Lions, they do get set for a grudge match at Ohio State Lacrosse Stadium. Third-seeded Penn State meeting up with its nemesis, second-seeded Maryland, whose Terrapins seek another Big Ten title on the Big Ten Network. Here's the way the bracket lies at the moment. Michael Bain led the way for Michigan earlier tonight, advancing the Wolverines into Saturday's championship game, awaiting the winner of this Penn State-Maryland showdown. A very pleasant welcome to you, along with Mark Dixon. I'm Joe Beninati. Mark, we've already witnessed an upset in semifinal play in this Big Ten tournament. How surprising was it to see Michigan up in Johns Hopkins? So a surprise and then not a surprise. The surprise portion, Hopkins got up 6-1 and was dominating. Michigan found a way to fight back and win going away. Not a surprise in the fact that this Michigan team can score goals. Last year they were the number four seed, a little deja vu, and all of a sudden Michigan will be competing for another Big Ten tournament title this Saturday. The first go round between Penn State and Maryland, it was an absolute thriller on Big Ten Network. What's at stake for these two teams now in semifinal play? I think when you look at their body of work coming into this game, winner will get a first round home game seeded in the NCAA tournament. Loser will go on the road. There's a lot to be said for home cooking, being able to sleep in your own bed and keep your routine. So the stakes are high in this one. Time to meet the goalies for tonight's action. Penn State boasting two-time Big Ten Specialist of the Year, Jack Frassian, who has an uncanny knack mark for incredible saves. He, he really does. He makes saves with his feet, his ankles. I mean, the lower appendages are off the charts with this guy from Penn State. Maryland at the other end. All the faith in the world in its netminder, Logan McNaney, a keeper who's been battle-tested in the biggest of games. He really has, and he's a national champion. He's an All-American, All-Conference, coming back from that knee injury. I thought his saves in the second quarter kept Maryland in the game against Penn State and allowed them on to victory. John Tillman, the head coach for Maryland, told us it was good to give the guys a physical and mental break last week after falling in the rivalry game in Baltimore to Johns Hopkins. Coach Tillman's squad at 8-4, second seeded, squaring off against Penn State, Jeff Tambroni, the third seed in this Big Ten tourney, a mark of 10 and three. Tambroni pushing the buttons in Happy Valley for 14 seasons now. Off and running, Luke Weirman gets the opening draw for Maryland in the white jerseys as they battle Penn State. And it's interesting, Kobe Baldwin, the freshman for Penn State, taking the face off. Chase Mullins was sensational last weekend in a win against Rutgers, but I think they feel like Baldwin is the better matchup for the Superman for Maryland, Luke Weirman. Every once in a while, it pays off to throw a little wrinkle in on the opening draw. Sure. Syracuse with the ball for the Terps, 38 in the white. Scored goals in every game this season. Spanos, sent it back behind to Irksa. Now in his sophomore campaign, he led the Terps in points a season ago as a freshman. Rarified air in College Park. On the move, Chorus. Snap it inside. The look for Daniel Carroll, he misfires. Ball down, and the Nittany Lions in blue come away. Wearing two tonight, that's Will Costin on the back end for Penn State. You're seeing Jeff Tambroni's lineup at the bottom of the screen. Nice defensive series to open the game for Penn State. This offense, that first 15, 18 minutes of their regular season meeting, Joe, I was blown away by the efficiency, the speed, the execution of this offense. Can Penn State replicate that and be consistent with it? The word you just used was speed. John Tillman said we have to know that Penn State's gonna try and start fast against Maryland tonight. On the delay, Mac Costin. Bumped by Nick Red, short stick defensive midfielder. Matt Trainer on the go, into the alley. He too, hammered by Red. 30 seconds to shoot. Jake Morin on the outside. Long stick midfielder waiting for him. Feed it inside for Trainer. Red still there in his hip pocket. Off the swim move. Trainer fires. He scores. Matt Trainer. A great start for Penn State. Impressive short stick defensive midfield play by number 47. 
Nick red and white. So they go to the other side, and then they get red on a second go round. He won the first matchup. This time he just overcommits, and you can see him lunge. And once trainer realizes he has leverage, swings top side and whips it past Logan McNaney. Weirman meets Baldwin again, and this time it's Colby Baldwin winning the draw. In the first go round between these two, he was two of seven. Weirman, as usual, gets the lion's share, if not all, of the face-off work for Maryland. Penn State on the board first. Matt Trainer with tallies in 13 of his 14 games this season. Kyle Lehman on the go. Bring it up top for Luke Mercer. Mercer working in against Kohler. Flip for Trainer. Hawking him on the outside. That's Colin Burlace. Ajax Zapatello wears the famed number one jersey for Maryland. He's guarding TJ Malone. That's a ultra sensational matchup to watch the game within the game throughout tonight as Zapatello has control. Nice takeaway from TJ Malone. The Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year gets his pocket picked. Ball on the turf in Maryland with a huge cause turnover. Offensive Player of the Year against the Defensive Player of the Year. Just what you like to see. Chorus, who was brilliant in the come from behind win in Happy Valley, scored four times. Feeds for Maltz. Maltz forced away by Will Costin. As Maryland sets up the six on six, they're taking away Molliver a long ways from the goal. Mark Sickler, one of six different short stick defensive midfielders for the Nittany Lions. Just dipping a toe into this second semifinal, Irksa turns. Feeds, Maltz fires, that's blocked. If you missed it at the outset, the opener of this semifinal doubleheader goes Michigan's way. They knock off the top seed Blue Jays 10-7 behind a five goal effort from Michael Bain. Let's take a look at the defense by Ajax Apatello. Beats the pick, fights through, and Burlace with the little double comes in. Normally, that's what happens. Zapatella gets picked off and you switch the matchup. He kept the matchup and Burlace with a beautifully timed slide takes the stick, the ball on the ground. Nittany Lions work it from the outside. McNaney with a kick out save on TJ Malone. It was a dandy. Zapatella looking for the ground ball, running with him, Matt Costin, all the way to the sideline. The ball belongs to Penn State. Good defensive pressure by Matt Costin just kept being disruptive to Zapatello, not allowing him to pick up that ground ball until he eventually ran out of real estate. The ball went out of bounds. Interesting for Maryland, they're running Molliver out of the box, starting Maltz, Kelly, and Irksa on attack. It's good to see Maltz in the lineup. He's missed some time with some injury. Submarine shot there, kicked out by McNaney on a heater from Jake Morin. McNaney rounding into form. Becoming more and more stout as the seasons progressed. He was injured a season ago. Back in 22, and Maryland won it all with that incredible team. It was McNaney who was the most outstanding player of championship weekend. Saved their bacon as Cornell made a late run in that national championship game. Really just a leader. He's so comfortable, so technically sound. I know you really enjoy watching him play. There's no you know, highs and lows in terms of emotion. He's just a, a real pro. So efficient. Brennan, who among the second midfield for Maryland will rise up tonight? Whittier on the go. Tracked down there on the outside by Grant Hawes, the top short stick defensive midfielder for Penn State. Irksa in a matchup with Will Costin. Hesitates. Irksa. Question mark, works back inside on the bouncer. Frassi in there at the top of the crease. There's a crease violation against Maryland. It's Penn State ball. Not only did Irksa step in the crease, he got pasted by number six in blue, Alex Ross. So physical play by the Nittany Lions trying to establish a tone here with this Maryland offense. Ross is second team all Big Ten Conference performer this season. Penn State at 10 and three, Maryland at eight and four. Terps have been off since the setback at Homewood Field. Lost a 7-5 slugfest to Johns Hopkins. Matt Trainer fires, there's McNaney crossing over, seeing it well, and a beautiful outlet is right on the button for McDonald. Fast break, Terrapins broken up by Will Costin. 
An active stick in the passing lane. Nice job by two in the blue. And Ross there dropped Jack McDonald. So Ross playing very physical here early in the contest. That ball was a play on, a loose ball push on Alex Ross. I think he needs to rein it in a little bit. Depending upon who you ask, it's the 43rd time these two teams <laughs> it, have squared that, off. That, I, that drives us crazy, doesn't Every it? Every time. <laughs> Penn State, just a single win at Maryland's expense. Maryland, a winner at Panzer earlier this season, 13-11. Molliver on the swim move against Leary. Feeds the crease too tall for Maltz. Chased down on the outside by Syracusa. He's picked up there by John King. Syracusa hesitates. Ran out of real estate to shoot that one. Just under 40 seconds left in the shot clock. Spanos. He can heat up. He works against Sweeney. Trades him off to King. Erksa has had the ball in his cross quite a bit. Feed it inside. No catch lane there. Syracusa battles for the ground ball. Tracked down by two defenders, and Penn State comes away with a takeaway. Penn State being very aggressive. Maryland offensive coordinator Mike Phipps. Some shuffling. It looks like it's a four-man first midfield unit. Syracuse, Spanos, Chorus, and Mulliver. Chorus was on the bench on that last shift. I like the fact that Mulliver is going to come out and have a shorty matchup. Spanos is going to get the pole all night long in that situation. Penn State don't have to make a decision when Spanos and Chorus are on the field together. And I think eventually they may be forced to poll Mulliver if he can have some success. Morin on the go, just past the eight minute mark. The only tally on the board, Matt Trainer, who did not have a point in the win over Rutgers in the Big Ten quarter final. Morin keeping it hot on the outside for Matt Trainer. Gets underneath there and slugs that one high after he made a slippery move against George Stamos. Nice move inside. Walk the dog, run right across his shoelaces. Trainer playing with a ton of confidence. Lehman off of a beautiful split dodge. Trainer feeds. There's the fire from Malone. He scores. When this offense is humming, that's what it looks like. Bang, bang, bang. The ball not in anyone's stick for an extended period of time. Lehman finds Trainer, great vision, threads the needle, and Malone doesn't need much. Just a sliver. The step down, the placement, the velocity, that is a thing of beauty. Great offense by Penn State. Five of the first six shots in this game belong to the guys in blue. TJ converts. It's a 2-0 advantage, and back to the faceoff. X we go. Baldwin. Winning it from Luke Weirman. And we'll see Weirman at, at times. He, he did in the pre, uh, the regular season meeting in Happy Valley. We'll struggle early on. But no one is better at making adjustments as the game moves on. But you got to be impressed with Baldwin winning two out of the first three. Weirman was incredible in the second half against Penn State when the Terps were able to reel the Nittany Lions in. Weirman finished up 16 of 27 in that game. Not only do you have to worry about Weirman, but you have an offensive midi and Jack Corris taking wings. And he is instant offense if you don't play the face off correctly. Penn State made some substitution errors in that first game and, and they paid for it. Luke Mercer has the rock against Red. Here comes the double. Mercer kept to the outside. It's been a very physical first nine minutes for Nick Red and the Terrapin defense. Lehman turns the corner. McNaney seals the post. Ground ball comes up for Penn State. Great ground ball by Trainer. Beautiful save by McNaney. Get a whistle as they need to reposition the cage along the goal line. Yeah, and, and in essence, you, you want to make sure that the goal's in the right spot. That's how it got dislodged a little bit off its moorings. McNaney nudged it. But as long as you have the goal line, the goal is just for aesthetics. As long as that ball crosses the goal line, you, you've got a good score. It is pretty. It is. Oh, everybody loves the dent to that. <laughs> Will Costin, this is over and back against Penn State. Maryland looking for a numbers advantage off the restart. Zapatello pulls the trigger. That one shaved the post. 
Ajax Zapatello scored against Richmond earlier in the season. Irksa has the backup, closest to the ball, where and when it leaves the field on a shot, gets possession. Jack Chorus, kick it for Irksa, trying to get away from Ross. Loop it over the top, nobody there. Penn State will say thanks very much. Hawes will run with it. Maryland just looks sloppy. That last shot by Zapatello, that's been their best scoring opportunity so far in the game. And we're at the four and a half minute mark of the first quarter. That's not a good sign when a pole in early offense transition that misses the cage is your best opportunity. John Tillman was telling us earlier this week, you have to play a clean game, fundamental stick work, simple exchanges, and uh, avoid those bad passes. His squad victimized in the early going. An open look here and a trip to the top shelf. Matt Costin. It's almost deja vu to the first game that we had when Hopkins was dominant early. There is nothing fancy about this goal. It's just a dodge down the alley by Wallstrom. And he's going to get a step on his man and watch 23 in blue leak out on the back side. It's a throwback. Time, room, pay dirt. Nittany Lions are off and running. Nittany Lions appreciate. So far, so good for Penn State. It has been a terrific start for the Nittany Lions, but we've seen this before. That's unfortunate to players' sticks get tangled up. So they're going to go to a reface. This is one of the very rare situations that you'll have a redo at the face-off dot. It was uncanny. The sticks of Baldwin and Weirman just got interlocked and they couldn't dislodge. They'll do it again. Weirman right out the front, right into the fast break. Weirman looks, feed it over the top, score! Maltz with an outside rip. That's what number 52 in white can do to your defense. And that's the instant offense he provides for the Maryland Terrapins. The reface, thank you very much. Out the front door, he can shoot. So that's why you slide to number 52 in white. And he's barking at the Nittany Lion defense. Some emotion being showed by Luke Weirman. And Maltz gets to pick his spot and delivers a beautiful overhand bouncer past Frassian. In two games against Penn State this season, Weirman now has three assists. Gets Maryland on the board and a ground ball, another face-off win for Weirman. Jack McDonald made sure of it, coming off the wing. Funny things happen to opponents when Weirman makes plays like that. He has that ability to really flip the script and get momentum on the side of his turf big time. He has the ball, dragging Baldwin with him back behind the cage, trying to create some offense. Out of the six on six does Weirman. He sent it high and wide. What did John Tillman tell us this week? They, they really looked at what Virginia did with Petey LaSala through the years, leaving him on the field as an offensive threat. He goes, I think we can do that with 52, and that was a prime example. Daniel Kelly has the ball, 45 and white, sharing it with Syracuse. Syracuse rolling about against King. Here comes the double help with the hatchet work from Ryan O'Connor. Irksa off a screen from Chorus. Chorus is open there. He took his eyes off of that pass. Settles back behind the cage. Feeds. Syracuse fires. That whistler goes wide. And, and, and I think that that Weirman goal, much like Mikey Bame in the first game when he scored out of the timeout, that's the one that settles you down and gets you to say, okay, we can do this. Irks a bouncer, rejected by Frassian, and he's got the rebound in his cross. Big save by Jack Frassian. There you see that quickness of being able to go hide a low and then back up. Cat-like quickness by, uh, by number 50 in blue. In the women's Big Ten tournament, Northwestern and Penn State have advanced to a Saturday final. Michigan, thanks to the huge performance from Bain and others, upsetting top-seeded Johns Hopkins in the first men's semifinal, the winner of this game gets the Wolverines on Saturday. Unbelievable how Michigan's path, identical 
in 2024 to 2023. The big question, can they pull it off again, winning three games to win the Big Ten Tournament Championship? And then a Northwestern, their only conference loss this year in women's play was to Penn State, so they'll look for revenge to get the trophy. Matt Costin on the feed, tough angle shot there from Wallstrom, grazed the frame of the goal, chased down by Morin. He'll collect for Penn State, 20 seconds to shoot. Morin picked up by Red. Changed the point of attack. Luke Wallstrom again on the go. Driving in against Nick Albedi. Will Peden in the game, 12 in the blue. Shot clock's at three. Off this roll dodge, a feed inside, behind the back. Score! Lehman, and it counts. They're doing backflips in the Such House back in Maryland. Big We Are fans. They gotta love this one. Short time on the shot clock. Look at the bottom left of your screen. Most teams would throw it into the corner and say, we give up. Instead, Morin drives the edge. Lehman gets free and a little behind the back action. Prime time beauty on the Big Ten Network in the conference semifinals. Kyle Lehman, number four, has goals in four straight. Had an assist in the first meeting with Maryland. There he gets a spectacular goal for Coach Tambroni. Battling off the draw, Weirman and Ballman continue to go. Colby Baldwin has uh, had all of the first quarter faceoffs. Chase Mullins, we see 38 on the sideline in blue for Penn State. Wonder if they're saving him? Because when you go two on one against Weirman, you try to wear him down. And I thought early in the season, Joe, Weirman was starting to show tread on the tires. But when conference play rolled around, he was handled by Justin Wheatfelt in the first game of, of, of conference play. But since then, number 52 in the Maryland uniform has been his usual terrific self. Just a four second differential between shot clock and game clock here. Penn State in no hurry to get to the cage with Matt Trainer in possession. Stalked on the outside by Stamos. Trainer brings it back behind the goal. Lehman will try it again. This time against Will Schaller. Ethan Long, bad angle bid. That missed wildly wide of the goal. Final 12 seconds of the opening quarter. T.J. Malone against Zapatello. Malone feeds inside bouncer that goes wide for Mac Costin. 2.8 left. Lehman has to have eyes for the crease now. Floats it inside. Flag down as the horn sounds, ending the opening 15. I think that foul is gonna be on number eight in white. That's Eric Kohler. And it's gonna be an interference or an illegal body check as you just saw the player in blue from Penn State, Matt Costin, bite the dust. And with the flag down, it denotes possession, so no face off to begin the second quarter. So it's an interference call against Kohler. Penn State will be man up to begin the second quarter. There it is right there, yeah, just a, luckily he didn't get a cross check. Wow. 15 minutes in the books. It started off swiftly for Coach Tambroni's Nittany Lions. They've got the three goal lead over the Terps. Stater, Jeff Tambroni, a brilliant collegiate career for Hobart, the Statesman during their unprecedented run of, what, 11, 12 straight Division Three national titles. He's Mark Dixon, I'm Joe Beninati. Three cheers for all the men and women in our technical crew here in Columbus, Ohio, as Malone rips the top corner to start the scoring spree in quarter number two. Wow. Number seven, take a bow, TJ Malone. I love the ping of these new goals. This is absolutely brilliant. Nice feed, and, and he doesn't need much. Just that step up field, the placement, the velocity. 
beautiful shot by number seven in blue. TJ Just Malone. a few moments ago, Mark, we showed graphically how fast Penn State has been starting against Maryland in the two games this season. That trend continues. Weirman battling for this draw along with Baldwin. Still fighting for it. And it comes up Penn State for Ryan O'Connor, the long stick midfielder. And this, Joe, we've talked about it ad nauseum in our coverage of Penn State Maryland throughout the years. We've seen this on many occasions. We saw it back in March. Penn State between the ears, the mental game now. Don't tighten up, keep producing, keep playing fast, keep playing hard, build on this lead. On the move, Matt Costin. Tracking him down, Colin Sharkey. This is the third ever Big Ten tournament meeting between Penn State and Maryland. The last one was also here in Columbus at a different facility with different temperatures, I might add. <laughs> Jump shot trainer knocked away at the offside hit by McNaney. A smart save there, one he had to have. We will always have Jesse Owens oh, won't we Memorial together. Stadium. 40 degrees in rain, I want to say, and you told me it was a spring sport. <laughs> mm. What a difference seven years makes in Columbus. Couldn't ask for better weather. Terrific facility. I and mean, if need be, they can heat up the turf. This artificial turf has a heater on it. This, this facility, tip of the cap to the Ohio State lacrosse program, head coach Nick Myers. Magnificent job with this facility. I, I do like the fact that it looks like the Suze is not open tonight. <laughs> Suze is reserved for Ohio State lacrosse faithful, and with them not being in the tournament, they're not letting anyone up there. Molliver on the go. The exchange made for Maltz, who has the lone goal for Maryland back in the opening quarter. Chorus, who really ignited the comeback at Panzer, feeds for an Irksa drive that was blunted in front. Off the ground, coming up with that ground ball, Brendan Leary. Penn State in the all blue with the white buckets, looking to clear. And doing so for Kyle Aldridge. You know, this is a Penn State team that you just feel that they're right there. They went to the national semifinals a year removed from a disastrous 2022 season. And they were just one play away from playing for a national title last year in Philadelphia, the victim of a, a bad call in overtime. And, and they, they've regained that confidence. Mercer lets it fly. He scores. This is just a speed ball. Fastball right down the middle. He grooves it, but the placement. I mean, this is a thing of beauty. Mercer takes a look at the matchup, says, okay, I've got it. Just gets a step. And normally you bang this behind, but he stops, plants, and just puts a dart far post. And look at the placement right off the hip of the left-handed goaltender, McNaney. That had to be music to the ears of Luke Mercer, who had just one goal in his last five games. You wouldn't know it by that shot. Jeff Tambroni's squad out to a 6-1 lead. They had the first three of the game and the last three of the game. Weirman gets the draw for Maryland. Braden Erksa will slow the tempo. We'll go six on six. We've seen the score before tonight. 6-1, Hopkins was up and then the Michigan Wolverines made the run. The problem here with Maryland is their last outing, they only scored five against Hopkins. Two of those goals came in a three-minute non-releasable foul against the Blue Jays. They scored two man-up goals, and then were only able to muster three the rest of the contest. Who on Maryland can step up, win a matchup? Spanos on the feed, Syracuse on the roll dodge. Feeds it inside. Great stop, Frassi, and he robbed Daniel Kelly. With his feet. For right? Parn Yo, definitely. With his with feet. Jumping, all the things that are unorthodox about Frassian on display there. And hearing it from his Penn State teammates. I tell you, the Gavazdan brothers, Andrew and Michael, played at Hofstra and Hopkins, respectively. They run goalie Smith, and I know Frassian is one of their, pu one of their pupils. And I don't think they could teach that. That is not something you teach to a goaltender. 
His timing is extraordinary. And they teach you to always stay down, don't jump. But he's gonna, when that, we show you that highlight, he's leaping in the air. Trainer fires, that's uh, too tall. Reload it for Sean Donnelly. Snap it back behind for Malone. An open look here, Lehman, bullseye! It starts with goaltending, and Frassian, you can't say enough superlatives about number 50 in blue. This is a sweet look from Syracuse inside. Kelly with the shot. And, it, and it's wickets, it's, it's boom, boom. It's like a croquet wicket. It goes from one to the other, stays out. And then Lehman just steps in and continues the barrage. There is no let up thus far for We Are. Penn State throttling up a 7-1 advantage. Plenty of time to go in this opening half. Sublime for Johns Hopkins, but you got those two. Frassian, the two-time reigning specialist of the year, and McNaney, a national champion, All-American. Doesn't get much better than what we have between the pipes here tonight. Maryland head coach John Tillman, I am sure, on the sideline telling his guys, hey, we've been here before. It's a similar script to the first regular season meeting between these two. Who will be the igniter in making the comeback? And on the other side, as Molliver feeds for Spanos, Coach Tambroni saying, hey, we left a lot on the table in that first half, the first go round. He's saying to his men, step on it. Let's keep stepping on it. And, and McNaney made saves. When, when Penn State got up 6-2, Spanos fires, he scores! To stop the bleeding. Right on cue, big number seven, who made hustle plays in that first meeting on the Sunday night in State College, running the ball out of bounds, getting extra possessions for Maryland. This is exactly what the doctor ordered. Very unnecessary for Frassian to come out of his cage. Right there, he throws his rhythm off. And by the time he gets back in, You've got big number seven with leverage down the alley. You can see how far Frassian was out because he had to get back in the cage, and Spanos just ate that up. Spanos blanked in his last two games by Rutgers and by Johns Hopkins. Baldwin continues to be the man at the faceoff dot for Penn State, and Colby Baldwin gets his boys in blue the ball here. 7 2 Nittany Lions, 9 40 away from the halftime break. So, so this was the stage of the game in the first meeting where it was 6-2. McNaney started making saves, and they seemed benign at the time, but those stops allowed him to keep the score within striking distance of Maryland. Penn State's got to keep pouring on. Matt Costin on the go. He converts. This is good news for Penn State. They're not letting number 30 in white, Logan McNaney, get into a rhythm. And I'm a little surprised at how dominant these offensive midfielders are for Penn State. They are blowing by their matchups. And this is a pole that just gets smoked out front. That's number 50, Jackson Canfield. And that is Olay defense. Beautiful job by Costa to get down the alley, gets to the middle of the field, and puts it past McNaney. Three different multi-goal scorers for Penn State already. Malone, Lehman, and Matt Costin. It's an 8-2 advantage, and a ground ball for Ryan O'Connor. Subs coming in defensively for Maryland, as Jake Morin has the rock for Penn State. I love how Baldwin is kind of negating the wings for Maryland. Weirman oftentimes doesn't need his wings, but tonight it looks like he will. And Baldwin making life very difficult. Peden back behind the cage with his defenders hung up there. That's McNaney helping out defensively. Ball down and it works out well for Maryland as Zapatella will streak across the midline. Play catch with Daniel Kelly, the son of a coach. Dad Brian, the head coach at Calvert Hall. Baltimore area. 
his brother Jacob, uh, college career at Carolina at Georgetown. Irksa on the jump, denied there. Frassian had the angle. The helmet and headgear off. Irksa down and in need of attention. And this is not good. The way the Maryland medical staff raced out there. Athletic trainers, Anthony Benyarko, Lindsey Riley sprinting to tend to Braden Irksa. A hush falls over both benches and the crowd here at Ohio State Lacrosse Stadium. I mean, this is a Maryland training staff, very seasoned, very veteran, and they immediately calling for advanced medical resources. Doctors and emergency medical service quickly onto the field. Penn State has the 8-2 lead. All eyes now on Braden Irksa as we step away. Lacrosse action on Big Ten Network. This is the men's Big Ten tournament semifinal between Penn State and Maryland. Penn State an 8-2 lead. Both teams huddled around their respective benches. An injury a few moments ago to incredibly talented attackman Braden Irks of Maryland. He has remained down on the field. Athletic trainers, doctors, emergency medical service are out to tend to Irks. There is a stretcher that has been rolled onto the field as the emergency medical personnel continue to tend to the fallen turp. And you see the warm and hear the warm round of applause as Irksa has now been lifted onto that stretcher. Yeah, and, and during the break that we took, Joe, we, we took a look at the replay. We're not going to reshow it. Uh, it was a legal hit by Alex Ross of Penn State. It was a whiplash effect of, of Irksa. His head snapped back and made quite an impact on the turf and hence the helmet coming off and the recognition, kudos to the Maryland medical team recognizing right away that, that Irksa needed immediate attention. Head coach John Tillman just jogged out towards Braden as you see him being wheeled towards the end zone. All of this with 8.18 left in the second quarter. So the Terps, who find themselves down by six, will have to make a go of it and a rally of it without one of their very, very best on offense. Without question, and this is this is a difficult situation for, for, for us. Uh, our prayers go out to, to Braden and his, and his family and the Maryland Terrapin lacrosse family as well. Hope for the best from number 10 in white, who, as you mentioned, is a sensational player. Uh, but, but Maryland right now has to pull together as a unit and try to play on as Braden's being attended to. We do understand from reports on the field that Braden is breathing, that he has movement in his extremities. That's sensational. That's, that's great news. And we will keep our hopes up for him. Just a few moments ago, Braden, you can see right there, right thumb raised. What has to be a good sign as uh, the sophomore has been taken off the field and it appears is going to be transported to a medical facility via an ambulance as we resume play in the opening half of the second semifinal in the Big Ten Men's Tournament. Michigan upsetting top-seeded Johns Hopkins in the opener. Good ride here for Maryland. 
The Terps get the ball back. Spanos jogging in, fires, and a split save for Frassian to keep this an 8-2 advantage for the guys in the blue jerseys. Yeah, what a, what a ride for Maryland, getting the ball back, coming down, and Spanos, boy, that would have really lifted the spirits of this Terrapin team. But Frassian sticks that right leg out, kick save and a beaut, keeps the ball out of harm's way. Frassian in double figures and stops in 11 of 13 games this season. And so dramatically, he adds to those totals game after game. Matt Costin off the split dodge from right to left. That scorcher went wide. Backup belongs to Penn State. Nittany Lions had four on the board in the first, four more here in the second. Wallstrom on the drive, bounced it wide of McNaney. It'll stay Penn State ball. Zapatello peeking out on TJ Malone, the marquee matchup on the field. Offensive and defensive players of the year in the Big Ten going after one another. Trainer on the split, tries to get away from Sharkey. That pass from Lehman for Costin, he scores! A lightning quick release from Mac Costin. Yeah, the barrage continues for Penn State. Matt Costin, we're in the Midwest. Not in the old gunslinger territory of Texas or anything, but this is a gunslinger kind of shot from number 23. Watch him put it, pull it out of his holster, boom! What a beautiful delivery. Near side, fooled McNaney with the velocity and the placement of that one. Penn State continues to roll heavy. Golds in all 14 games for Costin. That's his fifth hat trick of the year. Maryland needs possessions. Weirman bumped. Baldwin on the push. It'll be Maryland ball. Terps tallies from Maltz and Spanos, and that's it so far. Penn State once again tattooing them in the first half, as they did at Panzer Stadium in Happy Valley, only to fall by game's end. Yeah, and, and that's the history that Penn State has to have in their back of their minds. They can't let it dominate their thoughts, but they've got to have it in the back of their mind that this game is 60 minutes long, and Maryland is a team that will not quit. Good ground ball from Jack Posey, the injured defender who has returned in the latter stages of this season, 11 in the blue. Alex Ross looking to clear. There's a whistle and a flag away from the ball. The emotions are getting the better of Maryland right now. And it looks like the official is going to take both Maltz from Maryland as well as Grant Haas from Penn State. Haas was just trying to get away from Maltz. And Maltz delivered a couple of headshots right in front of the Maryland bench. And, and I think game management right here, the official's going to take them both. Blue 16, each one minute there on Sportsman like Connor. That's full time, sir. Blue hat possession, simultaneous fouls, blue ball. So they're, they're both getting on Sportsman like. The official didn't give the signal for, for full time locked in, but they will be locked in. They'll go in together, they'll serve together. And because Penn State had possession, they will maintain possession, but the emotions very raw right now for, for the Maryland Terrapins. Number 16, Derek House. One minute full time penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. Hawes, unsportsmanlike. Penalty number 37, Daniel Moss. One minute full-time serve for unsportsmanlike. Unsportsmanlike for Maltz. Full-time serves, as Mark Dixon tells you. So There's here? the exchange along the sideline. You can see Hawes, Hawes has his hands in the air. In the air. And, and Maltz, again, he just saw his teammate injured in a bad way, and, 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 and emotions are running high. You, you can't blame 37 and White. Uh, I, I will say, in, the, in that regard, it was clear who the aggressor was in that one. An official, you gotta, you, you gotta take, you gotta take what you saw. Gonna reset the shot clock here, and Mark, just to reiterate, on the injury to uh, Braden Irksa, you felt that the hit was a good hit, a legal hit, that led to him hitting to the ground. I, 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 it looked like the Penn State defender checked him through the chest, hands together, didn't come up high. 
it was how Irksa fell and his head just violently snapped and, and, and struck the turf. Very unfortunate. On the swim move, Lehman against Schaller. Up top it comes for Luke Mercer. Mercer lets this bouncer go. Ricocheting off the crossbar and McNaney out of play. That one's on the way to Upper Arlington. Holy <laughs> smokes. Yeah. I mean, regardless, clean, not clean, that, that's one of your teammates, that's one of your friends. Right. You know, so so you're you're gonna want to get your pound of flesh and, and emotions are running high. That that is I've been as an official, uh, as a coach for, with my kids. I've seen injuries like that. It's very hard to refocus and, and collect yourself after witnessing something like that. Matt Trainer, after an acrobatic pass from Malone, his bouncer misses the target. 36 seconds to shoot. Just now five minutes to go in the opening half. Penn State in the driver's seat. TJ Malone had that bid partially blocked. Burlace was there in his face. Donnelly will bring it in off the end line. Sean Donnelly. Sidestepping red, turns the corner, jump shot is in the cage. The hits keep coming for Penn State. Relentless is this offense and the push for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Simple dodge from behind the cage. Donnelly gets top side and I love how he took the little extra step to get better leverage, a better angle, and you can see the excitement and the support that he's getting from his teammates. 10-2, Donnelly, who scored in the Big Ten quarterfinal win over Rutgers, gets himself on the board and advances Penn State's lead. This to the point we were making with uh, Coach Tambroni's comments to us during the week about, hey, we left more on the table it could have been a larger lead for Penn State the first time around, and they don't want to be making any missteps this time, this late in the season. Without question, and, and this is a Penn State team that is locked in, dialed in, focused, and playing at a high level. Spanos looking cross field. Chorus didn't come up with that catch. Chased down by Sam Sweeney. Syracuse's turn now. First call of the night for Owen Murphy, 55 in the white. An electrifying shooter when Murphy has time to uncork it. Syracuse looking to go. Picked up there by Alex Ross. Syracuse traded off to the short stick there, Aldridge. Syracuse wants his left. Molliver turns it. Daniel Kelly operating at attack. Spanos inside Molliver. Ball down, and it comes up blue. Will Costin, normally wears 28, he's got two on his back tonight. Just over three minutes with which to work in the second quarter. The second semifinal, Michigan has already pushed through. They get the winner of Penn State, Maryland. Yeah, Penn State, again, just continue to play smart lacrosse. Maryland on their heels, not only physically, but now emotionally, but this is still a proud veteran team that can make plays, and you cannot take anything for granted if you're Penn State. The competitive spirit needs to remain. Wallstrom on the go. You can bet the leadership core for Maryland is saying, hey, let's rally together. Let's win this one and bounce back for Braden. Braden Irks a talented top scorer for the Terps, injured with eight minutes and 18 seconds to go in this second quarter, left the field on a stretcher. Malone against Zapatello. TJ Malone working in concert with Matt Costin. Morin slithers inside, he scores. Jake Morin. In, in the first quarter and early second quarter, it was the attack having success. And that has opened things up for the midfield of Penn State, who just look to be playing in a different gear right now against Maryland. Beautiful move. Morin, a little bit of a spin to get away from the defensive pressure. And right now, Penn State is feeling it. 
up by nine. Seven of the last eight goals belong to the Nittany Lions. Violation here off the draw against Penn State with 2.25 to go in the opening half. Brennan on the move. Gliding that ball for Molliver and getting right back. The midfielder inverted below the goal line. Trying on Hawes for size, a sidewinder that's off of Hawes's hip. Ball down and once more pouncing on it. It's Alex Ross. Will Costin will advance. Tail end of the second quarter. Penn State bullying this Maryland defense. They've been fantastic. We couldn't have drawn it up any better. And they've kept the pressure on. I'm impressed with the focus of Penn State. Whistling drive sent wide there by Mercer. Penn State's most productive first half of the season now with 11 points on the board and counting. Lehman will serve this for Mercer on the go. There's the vaunted Penn State pick game with Malone. TJ elects not to shoot there. Turning the corner, a flick from Donnelly that's snuffed by McNaney. Nice save by McNaney and, and Maryland just trying to keep this thing where it is. Today marks the sixth anniversary of the passing of the big man, Dick Adell. And they could use his spirit more than ever at this moment. The Maryland Terrapins, not just between the lines, but outside the lines. No one preached toughness, family, togetherness, us against them more than the big man. And on his the sixth, you know, anniversary of his passing, we remember him. Off the inside of the post there from Syracuse, Coach Adele was a wonderfully cooperative man to us whenever when we needed input and information about his program. Fabulous to work with. Flag down, extra man soon to come for Maryland. Latter stages of the second quarter. Murphy on the spin, slings this one back short side. He scores. Owen Murphy. Not much has gone right for Maryland in this first 29 plus minutes of action. There was a flag down, it was an offside, it'll be waved off by the goal. But you gotta start somewhere if you're Maryland. Why not a goal with a short time? It's, it's Owen Murphy. Wing dodge, gets underneath with the left hand and, and Frassian gave up that inside pipe and it sneaks right under what looked to be his right elbow. Great shot. You've got a chance with Weirman to, 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 to get another one here. Murphy ending a four-game drought for himself. He's picked up helpers. He's had assists in three of the last four weeks. Weirman gets control of the faceoff. Time ticking, four seconds left. Weirman snaking his way to the goal, feeds for Spanos. The ball down as his first half comes to its end with Penn State in control. An absolutely dominant first 30 minutes of action for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Everything seemingly going their way as they try to clinch a berth in their first Big Ten tournament championship game since 2019 when they won the whole thing. 10-7 win over Johns Hopkins. Michael Bame had five in a great come from behind effort. Maryland looking to try and duplicate something like that in this second half. They've already picked up one incredible come from behind win over Penn State earlier this season. And it was this man with the ball, Chorus, having it knocked out of his cross, who really ignited that comeback. He scored four times. He was incredibly vocal on the sideline, so well respected. His Terps teammates rallied around him, and they put down Penn State. It was, it's uncharacteristic for Chorus, who, who's a more a lead by example kind of player, but he was very emotional in the locker room at halftime in Happy Valley as well on the sidelines, and it was a tremendous pick-me-up. 
Who's going to fill that role tonight for Maryland, especially, especially under these circumstances uh, with their teammate injured? Syracuse fires wide. If you haven't been with us throughout the telecast, an injury to Braden Irksa. It happened with eight minutes and 18 seconds left in the second quarter. Irksa was taken from the field on a stretcher. He was tended to by athletic trainers, doctors, emergency medical staff here at uh, Ohio State Lacrosse Stadium. We are hopeful to hear word about Braden. Molliver looking to pick up the slack, going to the goal. Spanos on an inside roll dodge. Here comes the double. Chorus has it, fires, that's blocked, and hit Ross. Ricochet outside with nine seconds to shoot. Feed to the interior, deflected, and it's gobbled up by the Penn State defense. Cleared to safety by Kyle Aldridge. Just no openings whatsoever for, for this Maryland offense to get into a rhythm, start chipping away at this lead. This is a Penn State team that has just come out with a ton of confidence. Two wins in a row to end the regular season and in the quarterfinals against Rutgers, where a lot of guys got to play. You know, they, they were able to, to, to get some guys off of their bench and and, and get some get some touches and, and, and go a little deeper. and. This team has just come out on a mission so far here this evening. Two minutes clear in the third quarter. Morin on the run. Feed it inside. A whistling drive from Mac Costin, who racked up three in the first half. This time a bit too tall. Lehman on the go. A brilliant behind the back goal for him at this end of the field in the first half. Matt Trainer also joining the party offensively as Penn State's numbers were Terrific in the first 30 minutes. Every man's a goalie, even when you don't intend to be. Ross just jumping up. Ricochets off of his ankle. And Maryland just not getting clean looks on Cage. Even that last goal they scored, courtesy of Owen Murphy, was a kind of, oh, I beg your pardon, kind of kind of shot. You know, if, if you're Maryland, you, you got to be concerned at this point about your offense. Only five goals against Hopkins in the rivalry a couple weeks ago, and now they can't really get on track against Penn State. Again, this, this is you know, being respectful. These are unusual circumstances that Maryland's operating under. Throwback here. The catch from Murphy, ball down. Ross run into by Signorello there, number three. Marcos come off the bench for John Tillman. Penn State back to the six on six saying Maryland averages under 11 per game, second fewest in the Big Ten this season. The Terps, the second seed at eight and four. Long comes a run in place for Malone. He fires to score. TJ Malone, another hat trick. The Philadelphia native would love nothing better to get the Nittany Lions back to the city of brotherly love and the national championship weekend. Little give and go. Ethan Long back to Malone, gets underneath. He just keeps his feet moving all the time, head up. And he's so crafty with his points of release. TJ Malone, Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year, showing us why on that last sequence. Hat tricks are better in all of his Big Ten games this season, except for one against Ohio State. He's on the verge of a 40-goal campaign, as you can tell, top of the screen. He has tallies in 47 straight. Good reason why he's the two-time Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. And you might look at, at Malone and a player like Garrett Dagnon. Well, you know, they're attackmen. They're playing high-level lacrosse. When you are the focal point of most defensive game plans, that what makes that so much more impressive. It's not easy to score at this level, let alone to do it in 47 straight games. King defending there on Signorello. This is deflected out of play. The injury to Braden Irksa necessitating John Tillman to go deeper and deeper to his bench at the offensive end. Spanos sharing the rock with Signorello and then this way looking for the back cut of Chorus. No shooting room there. 
Syracuse rings the crossbar. Tracks down his own rebound. Trying to save it on the sideline. It's goosed in there by Daniel Kelly. Great hustle. Maryland's a team that's not going to quit again. I think the winner of this game secures himself a, a home game in the, uh, in the NCAA tournament. Ball knocked loose. Frassian takes over. Dixie, you referenced this earlier. Penn State's lone win over Maryland came when they were then a number one team in the land. They beat the Terps in College Park in 2019. Turnover here for Penn State. Picked up off of the turf there by Jackson Canfield. Zapatello will drive back for Maryland. Yeah, that 2019 team, a national semifinalist. Grant Ament, Mac O'Keefe, Chris Sabio on the defense. Spectacular Big Ten tournament final. They won in overtime. What a classic game that was against Johns Hopkins. Who can forget Joey Epstein, the sensational freshman at the time for the Blue Jays. And Penn State, hard to believe, maybe not hard to believe, but you know, that's the only time they've been to the Big Ten Championship game, including last year, where they came in as the number one seed, lost in the semifinals to Michigan, but still made that run to, to the national semifinals. In Big Ten tournament play, Penn State is just one in four in semifinal games prior to tonight. A healthy lead over Maryland, 12-3. Trainer, swing it for Ethan Long, getting downhill on Alvidi, who stays right there on his gloves. I think with this lead, you, you look at Penn State, and do they start running a third midfield? Maybe some deeper attackmen. Other guys at the short stick defensive midfield position knowing obviously you still have a long way to go in this game But waiting for you if you can maintain this level of play is the championship game against Michigan In just two nights time. Yeah Malone kept this alive at the offensive end shot clocks at five Layman driving to the cage a shot clock violation against Penn State and I think we saw a little bit of that at the end of the first half when Sean Donnelly entered the game and scored a goal, only his second of the season. Offensive coordinator John Haas dipping into the bench a little bit. Syracuse opens this one up with Maltz and waiting for Chorus and Whittier to join from the sideline. Zach Whittier with the good speed running away from Leary. Syracuse threw a shoulder in there, throws the counter hit, ball down. Syracuse gets it back, feeds the crease. Kelly works it quickly. Molliver took his eyes off the pass. Sweeney going to draw a foul on the sideline. Sweeney decking Whittier. I think the referees have done a nice job since the Irksa injury. Then we saw the simultaneous fouls to both Haas, Grant Haas, and Daniel Moltz. They've done a nice job of managing this game. Just fighting for the ground ball. And that's just undisciplined by number three in blue, Sweeney. I mean, what do you mean? You're looking at the ref like, come on. I mean, you, you see the guy's numbers. You don't pull up. You knock him out of bounds. Go go spend some time in the penalty box. Robert Gross, Brady Ollier, and Adam Petricaro working tonight. Off this exchange, Terps go through their EOE extra man process. Slip that one through. Jump shot here from Maltz is too high. Griffin King getting his first touches, 42 in the white. I mean, Joe, we talked about this time of year becoming goofy. Bounce shot, a great rip from Daniel Kelly. Nothing goofy about that. High bouncers will go. I like how Kelly used the defender as a little bit of a screen. We're going to see it off of the replay. Number 45 in white. You can see the be the best. Coach Beardmore coined that phrase, but you can see him use the defender as a little bit of a screen. 
And then he looks to the bench saying, come on guys, let's go. Let's get it together. Let's make a run. And here's another look right there. Frasian can't pick it up and it gets roofed. Kelly had a couple of goals in the losing effort to Johns Hopkins in the regular season. He's got markers in four of his last five, including that strike. Weirman looking to come up with it. It's a loose ball push against Penn State that will give the Terps the ball dressed in white. Well, this is where you need to be on edge for Penn State. The, 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 the ability to make runs. Maryland has done that repeatedly in Big Ten Conference play in 2024. Penn State's got to hunker down and try to get this next stop. Syracuse, a nice pass inside. There's no stopping Maltz. Maltz makes this Maryland offense different when he's in the lineup and when he's relatively healthy. Such a great inside presence that can play the high slot and he can go down lower. A little bit of early offense. Syracuse recognizes a crack in the Penn State defense. He decides to push. And then there's the nice little flash cut by number 37 in white. Pops open. Syracuse sees him. Nice little touch pass and finish from Daniel Maltz. Eight multi-goal games this season for Maltz. Two of them against Penn State. Off this draw. Weirman gets the better of Colby Baldwin. And the ball back for Maryland. We, we, we talk about, you know, we talk about the Big Ten and where we think teams are headed NCAA tournament-wise, and then you have things like in the Big East where Villanova knocks off Denver in that conference semifinal. Weirman wow. just turned the corner. <laughs> He's made it three in a row for the Terps. Don't look down because you'll miss Luke Weirman. This is the spurtability of this Maryland offense. Weirman stays on the field. John Tillman, offensive coordinator Mike Phipps. They have got all the confidence in the world off of number 52. Wins the faceoff. Leisurely jog down the sideline, right? You're going to come out and play me? I've got the athleticism. I've got the strength. And I've got the ability to run by you. He just sets it up behind the cage. I mean, this is like an offensive player picking their spot, inverting. No slide, bouncer beats Frassian, and Maryland has hit three in a row in rapid succession. Three goals in 50 seconds time. The Terps back within six in Columbus. And you take a look at the goal runs this season for Maryland. A little bit of spurtability. Look at the Penn State runs. Three in three minutes and 15 seconds, four in just over four minutes, and they've scored now three in the last 50 seconds. The Nittany Lions are on watch right now for a Maryland run. Interesting, long stick midfielder Joe Scarfy just took that draw for Penn State. Right, come on, James, come on. So no Mullins so Leads far. you to think more and more that Chase Mullins is not available tonight. Could be. I did see 38 on the sideline. Syracuse with the ball. Maryland trying to make it four straight and make things even more interesting, still with a ton of time left in this game. Kelly and Molliver working against Grand Hawes. Molliver turns. No shooting lane for him. Shot clock's at 30. Spanos on the go, rolling back. Syracuse of fires, Frassi in making that save. I don't mind the shot by Syracuse. I thought he could have better shot placement. I, I think that was too easy of a save, and it looks like he probably tried to skip it, and it just got too far in on Frassian. Regardless, big stop for Penn State, good save for Frassian, and they stopped the bleeding at least momentarily on this Maryland run. TJ Malone will slow the tempo now. Less than five minutes remaining in the third. Matt Costin, who's a driving force for the offense in the first 30 minutes. Leaves for Malone. The pass inside deflected by Zapatello and taken away by Schaller. 
Two long sticks for Maryland running at the midfield, but they don't have the ball. Sharkey diving, gets it back for Zapatella. Over the top, he cranks the score! Ajax Zapatello in All-American style. That one got them off their feet. Even though the bench was already on their feet, that got them dancing. Jusko scored by the Big Ten Defender of the Year. In the first quarter, he came down and had an excellent shot opportunity. And there's no quit in this Maryland team. Look at Trainer taking on all those jerseys. But the sellout from Sharkey keeps the ball loose. Zapatella with the 70 inches of titanium. Watch him post up, cock it back, and deliver. Big goal for number one. Terps fired up watching Zapatello, a native of Portland, Oregon, going to work. Face off down. Aldridge bothered on the sideline there by A.J. Larkin. It's on the sideline again and bounding out of play. The officials say it's Penn State ball. I'm starting to see a little tightness in Penn State. It's a small sample size, but number 24, Kyle Aldridge, short arm neck ground ball. This is where pedals Penn State got to settle down. This is where the mental part of the game comes in. Obviously, the physical component still needs to be there. But what do you have between the ears? What have you learned from those past setbacks where you've had big leads against Maryland? Jeff Tambroni said we have to avoid huge momentum swings in this game. Penn State trying to heed the words of its head coach and stem the tide now. Maryland has the last four goals on the board. Malone fidgets to the interior. That's snapped wide by Lehman. Backed up on the end line by Ethan Long. Right back to work go the Nittany Lions. Donnelly against Kohler. Off the split dodge. Skip it on through. Outside heat. Bullseye. Luke Mercer. That's a big goal for We Are. And Mercer with the second of the night. After being a little unproductive the last few weeks, he's come up big. And I like the confidence. He just steps in. The skip pass. Beautiful shot. And Sean Donnelly making his presence felt again. His second point of the evening. And there's Malone, the leader of this team on the offensive end saying, come on, let's go. We got this. The bench reacts, feeling a little bit better about themselves now. Four different Nittany Lions with multi-goal performances. Face off here, Baldwin and Weirman once again, and the possession will be awarded to Penn State. The withholding call against the Terps gives it over to the Nittany Lions. Third different two-goal game for Mercer this season. The earlier ones against Cornell and Colgate. Nittany Lions up by a half a dozen with three minutes to go in the third. Mac Costin jitterbugs to the interior off the roll. He'll flip to Malone. Working it on the outside, Wallstrom. Trainer digging in against Sharkey. He scores. Matt Trainer made that one look easy. This Penn State team from a year ago didn't lose much on the offensive end. Great trainer, Matt's older brother was one of them. Winkoff was the other. But Matt Trainer's really elevated his game here in 2024. Jeff Tambroni thought coming into the season they needed more out of 22. And here, he just puts his matchup in the spin cycle, gets leverage off the roll dodge, and then it's lights out. Game over when he gets top side and dunks it past Logan McNaney. Penn State back to doubling up Maryland, 14-7 now. Possession off the draw goes to the wing, Mark Sickler, short stick defensive midfielder. Sickler, who had a 
couple of goals in the NCAA tournament last year. Lehman running for cover in the waning stages of quarter three. Throughout the season, celebrating 10 seasons of lacrosse on Big Ten Network. Joe and Mark with you from Ohio State Lacrosse Stadium in Columbus. Temperatures in the 70s, a beautiful day and night for lacrosse. Michigan earlier, upending Johns Hopkins, knocking out the top seed to advance to Saturday's final where they get the winner of this one. Malone, then Trainer whistling that one upstairs. Matt Trainer can't miss. He has the hat trick. What a beautiful shot. And this is one where I'm not Nostradamus, but I can predict the future a little bit because you can look at the way Trainer is positioned with his body. Malone beats the double team. Nice little pass, and you just knew number 22 in blue was going to shoot that one. The body positioning, the stick set, look at him. He's ready to release right when he catches. And he fakes low, shoots high. That is a beautiful delivery, a BB out of the stick of training. Catching Logan McNaney shrinking on that short side, blew it right over his shoulder. Penn State challenged there briefly. Maryland made it a 12-6 game, and in the blink of an eye, it's three unanswered for Penn State to blow the lead back up to eight. Well, we asked the question, what did they learn from all those close losses to Maryland? It's, we gotta score more goals, we gotta stay the course, and that's exactly what Penn State has done over the last couple of minutes. Spano, so backpedal away as we reach the tail end of this third quarter. Whittier has control. Goals this season against Loyola and Rutgers for 13 in the white. Daniel Kelly delivers for Spanos and around the horn they go for Murphy. Into the alley against Hawes. Gets underneath. Frassian would shut him away. 27 on the shot clock. Spanos picked up on the outside by Ross. Keep it hot there. That's a sidewinder that misses the target. Back up on the end line. The hustle play for Aldridge gets Penn State the ball. And then and, and Penn State now, they're, they're looking to close this thing out. They're, they're looking to keep their foot on the gas and, and just make Maryland submit, which ain't going to happen. But they are just continuing to make plays after being the response from the Terps. That, that, that three-goal run that got them back in this thing. Penn State, it's been all Nittany Lions over the last few minutes. Such an efficient offense, the number one goal-scoring offense in the entire conference, most goals per game. They also have the best shooting percentage in the conference as Costin whistles that one wide. Mack doing the honors there. Lehman brings it in off the end line. As a team, they shoot to better than 32%. They're such great sticks. They move the ball fast. When you talk to Jeff Tambroni, he makes, he used the word elite a lot. Elite passer, elite shooter. This one bounces off the post. With the English, it goes wide of the cage as the quarter comes to its conclusion. Penn State now 15 minutes away from a date with Michigan in the Big Ten Tournament Final. Maryland, 15 minutes left to try and rally once more against Coach Tambroni's squad. Should Jeff Tambroni's squad continue to hold this lead, they fashioned a huge second quarter, as you can tell, bottom of the screen helping them to a 15-7 advantage after three. Can they weather the storm? Winner would advance to the Big Ten Championship against Michigan. And you look at the women's side of Big Ten lacrosse, Joe, you know, Northwestern, Maryland, Hopkins, Penn State, Michigan. I think that's a five-bid league on the women's side. Parnum hit up high there. That one rattled around his headgear. Ricochets back to midfield. Spanos trying to lower the boom on King. Syracusa avoids some hatchet work from O'Connor and Ross, and it's Ross who comes away with the ball. Penn State explosively sitting at 15 early in the fourth. If you're the Nittany Lions, 
stay the course. You're up by eight goals. You could see some fresh bodies getting some burn, preserving the legs of the frontline guys for that date with Michigan. That game was 14-8 back on April 13th, played at Panzer Stadium. Jack Frassian, a career high, 19 saves against the Wolverines. Malone on the move, sailing that one over top of the crossbar. Early stages of the fourth quarter. With you on Big Ten Network at the bottom of the hour, Joe Beninati, Mark Dixon, shouting out thanks to all the men and women in our technical crew for their efforts here in Columbus and back home in Chicago. McNaney makes a good stop there. Outlets for Red, further still to Colin Sharkey. Trailer break, Red, feed it inside Sharkey. Short stick midfielder's going to work. Kicked out of there by Frassian. On the clearing effort, rolling along, it's Jake Morin. Penn State in blue, the number three seed. Saturday's men's tournament final already has Michigan in it. Morin plays a little two-man game there with a quick stick set wide by T.J. Malone. And I think Michigan, with the results in the Big East, even more on a mission right now to win that Big Ten tournament championship, get the automatic qualifier, take all the guesswork out of it because those are the things, that is the one thing that the Wolverines can control. All the other activity, all the other results, can't do anything about that. Split dodge here, trainer lets it fly. Missed it on the short side and a little bit high as well. As we near the three minute mark of the fourth quarter. Penn State jumped out to the 4-1 advantage, led 11-3 at the halftime break. Maryland lost the services of its top goal scorer, top point producer, Braden Irks uh, to an injury in the second quarter. Mercer on the go, sent it high. We have not received any further word on Braden, not to this point. But the encouraging sign when he was leaving the field on the stretcher, gave the thumbs up. He was breathing and did have movement in his extremities, which is very good news. Matt Trainer snaps to the corner. Matt Trainer and Penn State will not be stopped tonight. That's a natural hat trick for Trainer. He has the last three goals on the board and four on the night. He's a terrific player and a great compliment. And I mean that with all due respect. When you have guys like TJ Malone, Matt Costin, he can win a matchup. He's an off-ball nightmare. Matt Trainer has really developed into a terrific all-around player for this Penn State Nittany Lion team. Just puts Nick Red in the spin cycle and beats him topside. And it has just been one of those nights for TJ Malone and company where mostly everything has gone right. Matt Trainer, Malone knows he can be a devastating scorer. Just ask Villanova, just ask Cornell. He had six against Villanova. He had seven against Cornell this season. Off this draw, possession is awarded to Maryland. The second seeded Terps with a mark of eight and four. Trainer reaches the 40 goal plateau this season with that last strike. Maryland, a team that has had double digit wins in 20 straight years. The Terps have eight wins this season. Chorus drawing a double. Chorus snapshot off the post. Big rebound. Daniel Kelly comes away with it. Shot clock was reset to 60. Spanos held in check for the most part tonight. Turns the corner and feeds for Molliver. Usually does his best work below goal line extended. The feed inside for Kelly. Another kick save for Frassian. And we've seen Maryland try to make some tweaks here. They started with Molliver running out of the box in the midfield position. The injury to Irksa, they've had to bump Spanos down to an attack spot. We've seen Signorelli come in the game trying to provide a spark. Spanos against Ross, the second team all-conference defender. Six in the blue. 
Spanos' pass was deflected by Parnum. Parnum and Posey returning for Penn State late in the season, changing the complexity of that defense. Walt Maltz with a wow. wrist that's knocked aside by Frassian. Maltz had high heat and eyes on the top corner there. Frassian makes so many body saves, you kind of forget. He's got a stick. That he has a stick in his hands. He typically does not reach above his shoulders. He has that weird mechanic, but he got it up there. And thank God for him because that one had upper 90 written all over it. Nice save for the Big Ten specialist of the year. Luke Mercer on the season, just a 19% shooter, but he's converted a couple tonight, a couple of dandies against Logan McNaney. They feed it inside. This is an open look. Ripped there by Lehman, did not convert. Ball down, comes up for Aldridge and the Nittany Lions. Fresh, Nine and a half to go. Fresh 60 to shoot as this game continues to tick away. I can't help but think about round two between Penn State and Michigan. Trying to picture your guys like Cathal Roberts down there on defense. How they match up with this Penn State attack. Layman. Zapatello aggressively going after that ball. An interior dodge and a conversion for Trainer with multiple flags down. Trainer's feeling it here in the third and fourth quarters. Got to assume this will be a penalty against Maryland. Obviously, Trainer ended up in that no man's land of the goal mouth, but he was definitely helped there in illegal fashion. It's going to be a push against Maryland. Flag is wiped off, and Trainer continues to be a prolific scorer for the Nittany Lions. Watch the save by Frassian. This is a, a great shot from Maltz. Beautiful stick save. Good support by Aldridge on the rebound. And then you're going to see the nice pass, and Trainer gets underneath, gets hit by number 50 in white. That sends him into the goal mouth. The flag is wiped off. Penn State continues to roll. Canfield lowering the boom on Matt Trainer. Trainer has the last four goals on the board for Penn State. Their lead now double figures. The seventh hat trick this season for Trainer. Yeah, this is a situation with the way this game has gone tonight. Luke Weirman, number 52, despite his best efforts, isn't going to probably be able to pull this out of the fire for the Terps. It'll be interesting to see Mullins. You know, we got Justin Wheatfelt waiting at the faceoff dot. Baldwin and Mullins, will it be a combo, or, or will the freshmen continue to get the yeoman's work, the bulk of the, uh, the reps? on Saturday. Hard hit there, Elijah Stobaugh just off the bench for the Terps. Maltz swings it inside, Spanos on a tremendous effort. Does it count? Yes. Acrobatic effort to score. Sfrasian pleading his case. The Maryland team refuses to fold. Spanos is going to be the beneficiary of the hard work of Stowball, who lowers the boom on the ride. And watch Spanos. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's Eric Spanos, number seven in the Maryland jersey. Finishes. Let's take a look at the feet. That's great footwork. I don't see him stepping on the crease line at all. Keeps his heels off the white. Whirling Dervish delivers the goal. Highlight reel effort by number seven. Hurdling all of his six foot five to do so. Maryland gets the ball back. Possession for George Stamos. Just now eight minutes remaining in the fourth. The deficit for Maryland is nine. Stobaugh, 44 in white. We've seen him, Signorello and King working deeper and deeper into a third midfield and extra attack group for John Tillman's squad. Isolation for Signorello into the alley, drawing two. Steps and fires, he pumped it wide. 
Frassian orchestrating the defense for Penn State. Maltz will take it in off the end line. Stobaugh picked up by Hawes. Daniel Kelly's next. Reverse it back for Stobaugh. Sweeney right there at his hip. Here comes a double team. Well timed there by Brendan Leary. Whittier thought about it, doesn't pull the trigger. Shot clock's at 16. Spanos jump shot, pounded it wide. They race to the sideline. It'll be Hawes and Penn State ball. We have a player down for Maryland. It looks like it is Spanos. Number seven in white. Athletic trainers Benyarko and Riley off the Maryland sidelines again. Good to see him up. He's given a great effort tonight. Really a great effort all season. Spanos going to the cage and just takes a check. Looks like in that upper thigh area. Big man will walk it off. Catch his breath on the bench for Maryland as the Nittany Lions look to clear. Will Costin taking a pot shot at the empty cage. Maryland's in a 10-man ride now. Trying to force as many turnovers as possible. So McNaney vacated the cage. Settling in six on six. Penn State, a team that twice before has scored 18 goals in a Big Ten tournament game. Did so twice in 2019 in the semifinal and in the championship game. They're on the verge of that once more. Mercer working for Bren Fleck. Jeb Bren Fleck, who normally sees the field quite a bit when Penn State goes extra man. In transition come the Terrapins. No break. Kohler. Swing it for Brennan. Griffin King, Murphy, big face dodge. Off the split. Nittany Lions sending defenders to swarm. Brennan rolling back. Murphy on the outside, picked up by Sickler. Neat moves by Owen Murphy, turns the corner. He was challenged by Frassi and he missed the top side. And yeah, we can see Maryland dipping into their bench a little bit. Looks like their big, big 10 conference docket will end after this one and then they'll turn their focus to the NCAA tournament. I, I believe Maryland will probably go on the road and have to start their march to Philadelphia in, in, in enemy territory. Elliot Dubik is 32 off the bench in white. Frassian adds to his save totals. In conventional fashion there as we are under five minutes remaining in regulation time. Yeah, you look back to that April game, Michigan-Penn State. That was a game again. Frassian saved their bacon, 19 saves. Michigan won the faceoff battle 17-8. Penn State had eight failed clears in that game. Uncharacteristically sloppy for the Nittany Lions, which resulted in 19 turnovers, Did a you very say high level. Eight, eight failed clears? They were 23 out of 31. Wow. Eight failed clears. 87% clearing for Penn State on the season. Yeah. And they still won that game by six goals because Frassian stood on his head. This rip from down under finds the twine. It's 18 for Penn State on the board. Delamonte rings it up. It's good to see the Nittany Lions dipping into their bench a little bit, giving some guys that work so hard in practice, and that's what you love to see. That's a guy getting an opportunity, scoring a goal on the conference's biggest stage, and he gets the love and support from his teammates as he heads back to the bench. Starts with number eight behind the cage, Bren Fleck, the pass, 
coming in from Chris Jordan and Dalamonte, much to the delight of his teammates, lights the lamp, and it's been all Penn State. The night appears to be done for Jack Frassi in the outstanding netminder for Penn State has yielded the crease to Ben Johnson. As we hit the four minute mark left to play in this Big Ten semifinal, Penn State soon to roll into a Saturday night showdown against Michigan. Yeah, can't, can't wait for that one. Improbable, right? I mean, the three, four seeds facing off for the Big Ten championship. Penn State, I think, has secured in all likelihood a home game, first round of the NCAA tournament with this win. On the run, more window dressing from Chris Jordan. We are, has just been a juggernaut here tonight from opening whistle until now. They have been impressive. Focused, motivated. Jordan makes the pass inside to Garrett Glatz. He can't handle it. Pop fly, I got it, and I'm gonna put it in the back of the cage. Nice effort from number 45 in blue. Jordan on the season, five tallies, all of them singles. No goals on the board since mid-March. Tacking this one on. A new record for goals in a Big Ten tournament game provided by Penn State, 19. Ben Johnson, the freshman from Peoria, Illinois, in goal now for Penn State. Maryland subbing in as well. Wes Schmidt gets into the cage. Following Logan McNaney, who is not able to slow down this freight train offense for the Nittany Lions. Josh Kaufman getting a run, 28 and white out there as a short stick defensive midfielder. Occasional clearing specialist for the Terps. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, Joe. In, in a year where a lot of people have been critical of Maryland for lacking offensive pop, they still were able to secure the number two seed and a bye in the Big Ten tournament. They have a quality out-of-conference win against Syracuse. This is a team that will be in the NCAA tournament. Just again, I, I think they're going to be on the road. And if they can get it together, they're going to be a tough out. This, this team always plays hard. Whistle to whistle, and again, you know, we send our best thoughts to Braden Erksa and his family and, and the Maryland lacrosse family. As they make their way back to College Park, you know they'll be mindful of Erksa. Braden injured in the second quarter of this semifinal, was taken from the field on a stretcher, received treatment from athletic trainers and doctors and emergency medical Next service roll. personnel. Mark told you the last report we had about Braden was that he was breathing normally and they did have feeling in his extremities. We wish him all the very best. Since then, Penn State took off and to the tune of a 19-8 decision, they are rolling into a Big Ten tournament final date with Michigan. Shovel shot sent high by Griffin King. There you see coach and goalie sharing a moment. John Tillman saying, wasn't our night, we'll be back and we'll get him in the tournament. Flag down, Ooh. the hitting intensifying late in this game. It was a wicked shot. Elliot Dubik was involved in near midfield. The referees are gonna talk this one over. Looks like the first foul is gonna be on Pup Buono from the Nittany Lions, they're gonna get him. Think right there and then watch the follow-up. Yeah, you gotta have something there. On Maryland, number 13, Zach Whittier. Only one player gets called for a cross check. And that'll be Penn State. One man, one minute. One man, one 66 seconds away for Jeff Tambroni's squad. 
Penn State penalty on number 49. Penn State once prior, victorious in the Big Ten tournament title. Won it in 2019 in Piscataway. Phenomenal overtime decision. Prevailed over Johns Hopkins. Blue Jays came into this tournament the number one seed, dispatched by Michigan. Michigan will meet Penn State for you on Big Ten Network on Saturday. Interior pass, Brennan drives it home on a nice look from Murphy. Good extra man offense, Owen Murphy showing good vision, skipping it down to Brennan. Maryland continued to fight tonight, but it just was not meant to be as Penn State came in a buzzsaw. We are setting up for a good championship Saturday. The Wolverines, Nittany Lions. It'll be really, really good. And Georgetown knocks off Providence in overtime in the Big Ten semifinals. So the, the Friars won't be stealing a bid from anyone in the NCAA tournament. Georgetown continues to strengthen their at-large resume should they not be able to knock off, surprisingly, Villanova beating Denver in that Big East, other Big East semi. As the final seconds tick off from Ohio State Lacrosse Stadium in Columbus, we'll be back with you Saturday night for the men's tournament final. Penn State will be there against Michigan. Penn State against Northwestern in the women's Big Ten tournament. Nittany Lions fans will have themselves a day, a possible double dip of Big Ten tournament titles. This one is in the books convincingly. The Nittany Lions for just the second time in program history have knocked off Maryland. Congratulations, hugs and high fives for the Penn State Nittany Lions. They down Maryland by the final of 1909. It was Jeff Tambroni who said if you're going to have success against Maryland, you have to play high tempo. Penn State came out racing, they would never stop.